Hey everybody, what's going on? It is Rick. I am here with a video game movie dome pickup. I uh, was able to finally get out to Pam's probably two weeks ago now. I'm recording this on March the 7th, Sunday, March the 7th. Uh, I still have a few weeks worth of videos that you guys haven't seen yet at the time of recording this. So my schedule has been a bit hectic, especially on weekends. So I wanted to get another set of videos recorded because I have a few hours today. So I figured I'd jump in, I record some stuff to show you guys. I have plenty of different videos that I'll be doing today that you guys will see in the upcoming weeks. And uh, we'll dive right in. Like I said, was able to go out to Pam's, the video game movie dome. If you guys don't already deal with Pam, I'm going to put a description down below, a link in the description box down below to her Facebook page. Pam's is an awesome spot. She's an awesome person. Uh, I had a bunch of stuff that I built up for trade-in. I had a plethora of trade-in credit. I still have a good amount of trade-in credit. And Pam always looks for stuff for me. She'll send me photos when she gets new stuff in. I'll ask her if she gets anything new in. So I have a stack of stuff to talk about. Um, a handful of Blu-rays, a few 4Ks, and then I'm saving DVDs for last because I have two complete series uh, DVD sets. So... We're going to dive right in. Bridget and RJ were with me. Um, RJ actually got a few pins that uh, he got a new backpack for when we go hunting um, this spring and summer. So he put the pins on his backpack. I actually got a pretty cool pin that is on my hunting backpack, um, which I don't know if you guys, I don't know if I've ever showed it off in a video on my channel. Obviously, when I go hunting with Dave, you might see me with the backpack on, but maybe I'll do a video in the near future. Uh, showing off the pins on my backpack and it's what I use when we go to like flea markets and stuff uh, it has nice pockets for water bottles so anyway let's dive in the first title here is one that Bridget picked out uh, I've never seen this movie she asked if I had it I said I did not have it so she said we should get it so here we are I grabbed it it looks like uh, it stars uh, Monica Bellucci Elena Hetty and then Heath Ledger and Matt Damon, and that is The Brothers Grimm. Sorry, blanked for a second there. Uh, this is a Terry Gilliam film. I've not seen this. This, I think, is the newer release of it that came out. There was like a re-release. Yeah, Paramount re-released this in 2020. Uh, Blu-ray Digital. Paramount's been releasing a bunch of Miramax titles that Miramax no longer owns because of the whole Weinstein thing. So... Uh, this obviously doesn't come with the digital, it is just the Blu-ray, but that's cool with me. Uh, I don't need to have that piece of paper in there, I'm, that doesn't bother me personally. So yeah, I've never seen Brothers Grimm. Let me know guys, is this one you enjoyed? Is it one I should prioritize towards the top of the to-watch list? Let me know. This one, um, we watched a series recently on HBO Max called The Movies which I believe was six episodes and it talked about like the golden age of cinema, 50s, 60s, 70s. Well, wait, was it the golden age and then 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s? Anyway, it's a great series. Each episode was like an hour and a half. Talked about all these movies. I added a ton of classic films to my watch list I've never seen. Um, and this is a movie that's always been on my radar. Um, I've been trying to find it for a good price to add to the collection to finally watch it. I don't think Bridget has seen it either. Uh, it's from 1974, directed by Roman Polanski and starring um, Jack Nicholson and Faye Dunaway. And that is Chinatown. So pretty cool to add this to the collection. I think this is a newer version of Chinatown or a newer release. Yeah, this is from 2017. So, Chinatown on Blu-ray. Excited to finally check this one out. The standard Paramount Blu-ray. So, very cool. Like I said, this has been on my radar quite a while. They talked about this in the 70s episode of the movies. When they were talking about um, One Flew Over Cuckoo's Nest as well as this film. So, Chinatown. Finally own that. This one, spoiler for a future review video, uh, we have watched already. <clears throat> Bridget suggested we check this one out, so uh, she said she really enjoyed this movie, and that is Freedom Writers. And man, like, not to spoil the review video, but I really, really enjoyed this movie. 
uh, based on a true story about a teacher who is a first time teacher and gets a job in inner city school. And um, I love stories like that. <clears throat> I love seeing stories of teachers who affect their students, you know, uh, like Mr. Holland's Opus, um, another spoiler alert to Sir with Love, stuff like that, uh, where it affects the kids they teach and, um, you know, it helps the teacher realize how much they love teaching because of how important they are in their students' lives. So Freedom Writers was no different. I'll talk more about that in a future review video. Next up, I recently talked about this um, in a video where I kept the DVD from a Facebook haul. Pam had it on Blu-ray and I was like, well, if I'm going to watch the movie for the first time, I might as well watch it in high def instead of a DVD. And that is The Pelican Brief, which stars Denzel and Julia Roberts. Anybody else in here I recognize? John Hurd, Sam Shepard, Stanley Tucci, uh, John Lithgow. So this movie is from, what year is this from? 90 something. <clears throat> 1993 so I've never seen the Pelican Brief it's on my Denzel Washington movies to watch list on my letterbox if you guys don't follow me on letterbox link below I create a bunch of lists of certain actors whose movies um, I want to see to try to like round up their filmography so I've seen pretty much anything of theirs I want Denzel's on the list um, Leonardo DiCaprio which we've started doing um, Tom Hanks, Joaquin Phoenix. So check out my letterbox. Pelican Brief there. This was really cool. This is still brand new factory sealed. We're going to watch this with RJ. Uh, hopefully next weekend when he's here. So in the past when you're watching this, in my future while I'm recording it, I've never seen this movie. I don't think if I did, it was when I was like young, young kid. Because this movie's from 1980. And uh, it stars Robin Williams and Shelley Duvall and as Popeye, brand new factory sealed, uh, getting the rub there. This was released in 2020 as well. Um, I've never seen this film, I don't think. I'm pretty confident I haven't seen it. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to watch Popeye. Like I said, pretty cool brand new factory sealed from Pam as well. So that's awesome. Um, she had sent me photos and most of these... Um, I think everything so far except for Pelican Brief was stuff that I asked for ahead of time. This caught my eye uh, as I was going through shelves and boxes at her store. Uh, this is also brand new factory sealed and features a heck of a cast. Um, first off, it's a Barry Levinson film. I tend to like his movies. I believe he directed Wag the Dog, which I absolutely love. Uh, it stars Bruce Willis. Scott Kahn, Danny McBride, Kate Hudson, Zoe Deschanel, and the lead, of course, is Bill Murray. And that is Rock the Casbah here with the, uh, like I said, brand new factory sealed with the slipcover. The slipcover's a little beat up, but that's all good. Better to have a little beat up slipcover than no slipcover, I guess. And also Liam Labunny, Labuni. I don't know. Um, but he's like a music manager and... Uh, he he finds a voice in a cave in I believe Afghanistan. It's like a war torn country. Anyway, it sounds interesting. I'm curious. It's R rated, uh, hour and forty seven minutes, two thousand sixteen. So fairly newer. Have anybody? Hi, I'm Rick. Have any of you guys seen Rock the Casbah? Is it good? Is it is it hot trash? Let me know here. Uh, I'm excited. I think it looks entertaining. Great cast. I'm a sucker for movies that are about music or have music in the plot. Uh, this I grabbed for Bridget while we were there. I asked her if she had it. We did not have it. Um, so she's a big fan of the Studio Ghibli movies and saw this in the case. I believe this was $10, if I'm not mistaken. It came with the slipcover and that is The Secret World of Arietti. I obviously have not seen this movie. Um, I've only seen Spirited Away and... Come on, Rick. Howl's Moving Castle, which I actually enjoyed both of them. I really enjoyed Howl's Moving Castle. So, The Secret World of Arietti with the, the slipcover there. Grab that. Bridget was excited about it. So, that's very cool. This being the Shout Factory release of it. So, there's that. 
This is probably the thing I am most excited about in this entire stack. Um, another list I made on Letterboxd recently is a list of best picture winners from the Oscars that I have not seen yet. And uh, I believe, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this is on that list. Uh, as you guys also know, I'm a pretty big Alfred Hitchcock fan. When um, Pam told me she got this in, I said, I want it. Absolutely. She said it's a little more expensive. I said, that's fine. I think it's actually out of print, which is pretty awesome that I was able to get it for 10 bucks. Um, but that is Alfred Hitchcock's... Man, I need to have a drink after this video. Alfred Hitchcock's Rebecca, uh, which stars Laurence Olivier and Joan Fontaine. I've never seen this movie. It's from 1941, if I'm not mistaken. 1940. I believe it won the Best Picture in 1941. I could totally be wrong. I know there's a remake that came out on Netflix last year with Army Hammer, who I'm a fan of. Not his personal life. That seems to be a little bit eh, right now, but I'm a fan of him in films. I think he's really good. But uh, yeah, I was so excited that Pam had Rebecca wanting to add that to the collection. This is probably my find of the day, the highlight for me. Uh, next up, a few 4Ks that I, um, one's an upgrade and one is a movie I did not own. The first one here is Phantom Thread, which stars uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, this being the 4K Blu-ray. That's interesting. I'm looking at the 4K here. It does not have the movie title on it. At least not that I see. That's pretty crazy. I bet that doesn't happen very often where they don't have the movie title on the actual 4K disc. But I enjoyed this movie. This was part of a really good Oscar year. I want to say 2018, the year Shape of Water came out. I think it was 17 or 18. Anyway, I was a big fan of a lot of the Oscar-nominated films that year. This film is beautiful. Uh, it's dark. It's pretty twisted in parts. So I had it on Blu-ray, but I figured why not upgrade to 4K. I think this was priced at $12. So like I said, I had I have plenty of credit at PAMs, and I figured why not do some upgrading. So Phantom Thread on 4K, upgrade for me. This movie I thought I owned, but apparently I did not own it, which is kind of crazy to me. This is a movie that's very heavy. Um, this recently came out. Um, I want to even say this came out this year, maybe? The movie's from 2000. I think this came out the very end of 2020 because it's the 20th anniversary uh, edition of this. But it's brand new factory sealed. I saw it in Pam's case and I said, I, you know what, I'll grab it. And I ended up not owning it. So that is... Requiem for a Dream, the 4K Blu-ray digital combo pack uh, directed by Darren Aronofsky. And like I said, brand new factory sealed starring uh, Jared Leto, Jennifer Conley, Marlon Wayans, and Ellen Burstyn. So very heavy movie. If you've never seen Requiem for a Dream, I recommend it, but it is not for everyone. It is pretty dark and twisted in spots for sure. Um, but yeah, I wanted to add it to the collection, so Requiem for a Dream on 4K. And now it's time to, uh, as I said, saving the best for last, even though Rebecca, in my opinion, was my best find. DVDs last, which usually doesn't happen. I usually do DVDs, Blu-rays, 4Ks. But two complete series DVDs, I believe each were $25, and both were factory sealed. Uh, the first one here is a show I've never seen. But I've heard nothing but fantastic things. I heard it's hilarious. I need to open this. So I'm actually going to open it on camera. But it is. That's why I need to open it. Reno 911. The complete series. Um, spoiler alert too. I, not that it's a spoiler. I signed up for Paramount Plus. They had a special where you got Paramount Plus for a year for 50 bucks. So I signed up. Uh, this, I believe, is on Paramount Plus, but I mainly got Paramount Plus to have access to all the MTV stuff. There's also some cool classic uh, Nickelodeon stuff on there as well. It comes with like a slip cover. I don't want to keep moving the case because something is definitely loose in here. Let's see. So it looks like it's broken down. Oh, there's the culprit. That's, um, yep, no scratches, just popped out. So they break it down seasons one to three, uh, uncensored in one case. 
and then seasons four to six in another case. So oh, let me double check this one. It, oh, that has a culprit too. Now that disc is a little scratchy, but season six disc one was, was loose too. So that's the only problem I find with these big cases is they tend to <laughs> kind of separate or have tabs broken off. So Reno 911, the complete series. Uh, like I said, signed up for Paramount Plus. There's a ton of stand-up specials on there. But I'm really excited about the MTV stuff. The new SpongeBob movie is going to be on there. $50 for a year. Comes out to like 4 bucks a month, so I figured why not. But the cast in this is really good, and I'm pretty excited. This is my kind of show, like a comedy, a goofy comedy. I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. So Reno 911, very cool. And then this is awesome. I actually owned all these seasons individually. I think I bought them from Crazy Joe, if I'm not mistaken. But Pam had the complete series set here for uh, 25 bucks, and I figured it's a space saver. I'll just sell off all my individual releases. And that is Taxi, the complete series, seasons one to five. This show has a tremendous cast. Um, it's an inside joke at my office with my dad and uh, a guy, Joe, that we work with. What does the yellow light mean? The Pac-Man episode. So you have Tony Danza, you have Christopher Lloyd, you have Andy Kaufman, you have Danny DeVito, you have Mary Lou Henner, I almost messed up her name, uh, Judd Hirsch, um, uh, Randall Carver. So just such a great cast, such a funny show, way ahead of its time. This is from the early 80s, 78 to 83. So. Taxi, the complete series, like I said, a big space saver because this is about the size of two of the seasons. Now I have all five seasons in one tight little case. So that's awesome. I'm always up for saving space. And that is it, guys. That is the haul from Pam's. We're going to do the elevator. Um, thank you guys, as always, for watching, of course. Be sure to check out the description box. Uh, you can find links to my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Letterbox, like I said, I've been doing a ton of lists on there. I review everything I watch. I do all sorts of cool stuff. I always follow people back if you follow me on Letterbox. Um, also, my eBay page, there's a link to that down below. Amazon wish list, Blu-ray.com profile, email address, my new PO box, all that can be found in the description box. Let's elevator this bad boy. I'm gonna go close to the camera. All right. I'm gonna do a one-handed too. So we got a nice healthy stack of blues, a couple 4Ks for nice measure, and a couple complete series there. So a very healthy stack. Thank you as always to Pam. I actually got more from Pam than this stack. Um, I got some stuff to flip. Pam knows I do that with some of the titles I get. But um, so there's that too. Try to turn my trade-in credit back into cash. Like I said, Pam's is awesome. I'm going to put a link down below to her page on Facebook. Message her if you guys are looking for stuff. She does shipping. She accepts, I think, PayPal, uh, goods and services on her thing. But reach out to Pam if you guys are looking for stuff. Support a small business. Pam's the sweetest person in the world. Um, so thank you to Pam and thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't already, please subscribe. Still have not hit uh, my 2,500 subscriber plateau. I feel like I am just stuck between 2,450 and 2,475. So I'm hoping maybe by the time this comes out, I've broken through. But I'm really trying to get to 2,500 subs. Um, I I'm content. I don't, you know, I don't think my channel is going to grow much subscriber-wise. But as long as I have a, you know, a constant audience, it seems like a lot of you guys like watching the pickup videos more so than the review videos. But I like to do the review videos, and I know I have dedicated fans that uh, and friends that like to watch my review videos to see what I've been checking out. So thank you for all the support, as always, guys. Thank you for watching. Until next time, who's down to movie?